other out of the car. The hypnotic milepost muttered, you're getting sleepy, daydream sleepy. I kept fidgeting and finally started banging the radio. My reception had been poor since leaving home. Then at 60 miles per, the dot ahead burst into a hitchhiker. She was a tattooed highway princess. Mm. Pasties for a blouse, a thong for pants, with 69 porned all over her right arm. Naturally, I stopped. Oh, if only I could have gone full throttle with her. But I had for a moment forgot about Mother, always in the back seat. She had been screaming in the back of my mind for decades, then and now. Never open the door to strangers, never, never. Nevertheless, I touched the handle and the door almost opened. Never open the door to strangers, never, never. Thus shrieked my daydream-destroying mom. My foot obediently pressed the pedal, and wet dream lady quickly shrunk back into a dot. And to this day, she still shrinks back into a dot. Every time I veer onto a road soft shoulder, with mom in back, there can be no rest stop on a soft shoulder. As I pass all these mileposts, almost, but never quite throwing mother out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> asking, asking for it. Uh -oh. I'm dancing naked on a rooftop in a thunderstorm and waving a sign up to heaven saying in big red letters, Call me, damn you! And if you're a cheap bastard, you can reverse the charges. Didn't you brand Cain and give Pharaoh a bath and all those divine muscles you strain, pouring buckets of water over Noah's nasty neighborhood? not to mention your pyromania in Sodom and Gomorrah. But you, great smiter, have yet to aim one lightning bolt at me. Am I not just as unworthy? Isn't dancing naked while holding a damn you bastard sign enough? <laughs> I covet your wrath. Do I have to kill someone to get its consummation? Say something to me, curse at me, at me alone and not through some holy man preaching hearsay to me, playing telephone as a kid's game, and the last child in the chain hears only a garbled revelation. For once let me be the first to hear your voice, man to man, or even irritated deity to whiny two-year-old. Mm. A come here, boy, or heel will do. I'd even wag my tail if you gave me one. <laughs> Beethoven and breathing. But tonight, I left the radio on, and now I hear breathing. Even when pausing my own, Beethoven and breathing. Clearly, no Beethoven lies next to me. But the breathing is real. Real and rhythmic. Primal and soothing. Like a pastoral. Sometime in the night, my son found his way to my side. Perhaps he woke in his shadowy room, frightened by a bad dream, or worse, disillusioned by a good one. I hear my seven-year-old's heaving chest. Is he too old to be here? What does it matter? He's here. Maybe on some future cold sweat night, when he's fully grown and alone like me, awake and tuned to Beethoven. He'll call for me. <laughs> one last one here. Okay. Night of the Round Bagel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, do the dollar wraps around his fingers. A buck tick for a three dollar bagel and lock special. Surely those, this will make him a gallant knight in the counter girl's eyes. But yesterday his dollar was wasted, for it passed unnoticed into the tip jaw. So today he waits for her to see, to actually witness. Now, no, her eyes are on the knife that's slicing a bagel. Now, no, her eyes are on the ringing cash register. Now, no, her eyes are glancing on the TV on the wall. Now, no, her eyes are checking her makeup in the mirror. Now, yes, yes, for she's finally eye to eye with him. 
The tight spring of his arm suddenly uncoils and lurches forward, slamming our Washington into the jaw. The sheer momentum of his munificence tips the tip jar over and the renegade quarters fall. The scowling grand lady of the rush hour morning bows, not in gratitude before a sugar daddy Sir Galahad, but to corral the carnage of coins for all the gratuities of the a.m. hours were set on their chaotic course by this bumbling bagel store buffoon. 